The great outdoors, uh, but I have a terrible sense of direction. And uh, I once got lost on the Continental Divide, uh, so I know the value of a good trail, you might say. One of my oldest friends is Dee Randolph. Uh, he's a great outdoorsman and a geologist. And he spends his summers and actually all around the year hiking through the great trails in the Pacific Northwest, mostly in Northern California, near where we live. And uh, last summer, Dee came back from one of his long hikes and he shared with me that he was deeply troubled uh, because the terrain that he was hiking through up outside of Desolation Wilderness was as dry as he had ever seen it. Um, so much tinder out there, and not much rain, and he was concerned. And it's been that way in California for quite a long time now. Our weather cycles align with what the climate models have predicted in this era of global warming. We have cycles of drought punctuated by uh, heavy rain years and the annual snowpack melts sooner in the season, so it's not there to protect the vegetation over the course of the summer and, and uh, through to the early fall when we would, in previous years, normally have our first rainfall. But the result is that we get robust seasonal growth in the vegetation underneath, and that turns to tinder in midsummer, and rain returns later every season, uh, la later every year. Um, and, uh, and that pushes out the fire season with it. And so for the past 12 years, I've lived in a mountain community, the mountain community of Paradise in Northern California. And uh, over the last two years, many of our residents have been talking amongst themselves with a sense of foreboding. The real sense is that um, something could happen if the rain doesn't come sooner, something would happen. And so last summer, uh, July 23rd, just up the road from us, Redding, California, near the Whiskey, Whiskey Town, Shasta, Trinity National Recreation Area, a tire blew out on a trailer that was being hauled by a car. And the bare metal wheel scrap, uh, scraped along the pavement, sending sparks into the dry underbrush on the side of the road, lit up a fire, and that fire then went on to consume 229,651 acres, and it destroyed 1,604 structures. They call it the Car Fire, Car for the region that it was in, not the car that started it, B-A-R-R, -R, the Car Fire. That was just up the road from us in Paradise. We choked on smoke for weeks and weeks following. Um, July 23rd it started, it ended on August 30th. That's when they finally got the blaze out. Quite a fire. Nothing to underestimate. For us Paradisians, fire didn't become a uh, if proposition, but a when proposition. There was no rain in September of 2018. There was no rain in October of 2018. I have my own story about the morning of November 8th, 2018, when the campfire destroyed my home, my neighborhood, our neighborhood, our town. Maybe I'll tell you that another time when I'm ready. But for now, I'd like to tell you someone else's story. This is Stephen Murray. Stephen's a Paradise resident. Uh, he worked as a groundsman for Apple Tree Village, a mobile park for seniors. Um, and this is what Stephen saw on his way to work on November 8th. He took that photo on the way to work. Um, <clears throat> this is Apple Tree Village, uh, the mobile home park where Stephen works. Uh, Stephen 
after seeing that fire, drove through his neighborhood honking his horn uh, and uh, to get the neighbors up and out. It was uh, just a little after 7 o'clock in the morning. Uh, then he went door to door, knocking, making sure everybody heard the car horn, making sure they got out. People got into their cars uh, as they got out into their cars and they drove out to the exit from Apple Tree Village onto Clark Road. They had to queue up because already cars were jamming Clark Road. Clark Road was one of the three main evacuation routes in Paradise and it had become a slow moving parking lot already. And so those seniors were jammed right in their, par their, their mobile home park waiting for a way can to get I, out. When he saw the situation, he went out and he, he worked with the folks out in traffic, made sure folks paid attention, let the seniors in the mobile home park get through, was able to get some cars out onto Clark Road, but then he realized he had way too many seniors that he had to protect, and so he circled back, thinking, I've got to find another route out, and he did. Uh, Stephen had the presence of mind um, to snap this photo as folks were lining up, getting out to Clark Road. This is the view that shows both the problem and uh, the solution that Stephen found. Over on the right of Apple Tree Village there, you'll see Clark Road. That's where folks uh, were trying to re-enter traffic. Over on the left, you see this long swooping line that kind of bends out. That's an old railroad track that uh, was a three-quarter size, a historic one, that the town of Paradise had purposed into a walking trail, the Yellowstone Kelly Trail. And really, it was the only well-developed clear trail in the town of Paradise at the time. Stephen decided that he would take his truck and drive it through the back fence of the uh, mobile home village and start leading folks to safety going down that trail. Nobody had been using the trail to that point. That's, uh, that's a photo that Stephen had the presence of mind to take as he was driving down the trail. You can see the fire uh, developing uh, to the left and to the right, he's driving through it. Uh, in the lower right, you see his rearview mirror, and you can see car lights behind him and the trail that's stretching out behind him. So Stephen drove a caravan of seniors. He led a caravan of seniors down that trail, and all of them credit him with saving their lives. Many folks didn't get out of paradise. There were cars that were abandoned and left on the side of the road. But because of Stephen's resourceful quick thinking, he was able to get onto a local trail and exit. And it happened to have been the only trail of its kind in the town of Paradise. So an opportunity found, taken, to the advantage of everyone. That's Apple Tree Village now. Uh, it was entirely burned. You can see just a few remaining structures. Um, that and nine out of ten uh, structures in the town of Paradise burned as well. Quite a devastation for the community. And that's one of the guys that uh, Stephen got out uh, just in time. They're lifelong friends now. This is another couple that had a different story. Uh, their story is they got in their car to evacuate. They found that slow-moving parking lot. They could not evacuate soon enough uh, that direction and so they decided to park their car and walk and they walked away from the fire but there were no well-developed trails for them to follow there were no other routes for them to get on that were nearby their house and uh, so that's uh, that's the day they first returned to their burned down house the way they got out was a sheriff's deputy happened to be cruising through some of the side streets he found them walking out toward the forest had they continued that direction because the fire was moving so quickly, consumed 10,000 acres in the first 90 minutes because the fire was moving, so, that's 111 acres a minute, um, because it was moving so quickly, uh, it would have caught up with them. They may have perished, but uh, they were able to get out with the help of, of a sheriff's deputy. Trails have become a very important thing in uh, the future planning for the town of Paradise. Urban Design Associates has met uh, frequently to perform listening sessions with residents around the town. And all the residents have uh, said, well, you know, if we move back to Paradise, what we'd like to see is more trails built out throughout the community. And that's become a real priority uh, in, the, in the current planning process for the town of Paradise. And what they've done is they've taken a multi-tiered look at uh, the 
uh, roads in paradise, starting with the evacuation routes uh, up top. And they've prioritized those to be the first place we'll start with trail building in paradise. That will help to expand the existing evacuation routes significantly. And it will also connect with the next level down of arteries that lead out from those primary evacuation routes in the, in the, in the community. We're going to build out trails along those as well. It'll be a long process, but the ultimate idea is that every Paradisian ought to be able to get out of their front door and very quickly find a trail that they can take to a main artery for evacuation, uh, or perhaps other alternatives to, for evacuation. It's a complex problem all mountain communities are now facing. What do we do in this new era when we cannot depend on snowpack to protect our mountains any longer, when we've got this rich undergrowth happening all throughout the forest scape? Uh, we know that there are going to be fires uh, that are coming with more and more frequency of catastrophic proportions. What do we do about that? One thing we can do is to design our communities in such a way that folks can flee before the fire comes too close to them. Um, and that's going to take a lot of planning, a lot of investment. We're working on the problem right now. We believe that Paradise may actually be an exemplary uh, community for mountains, mountain towns doing trails right in the, in the coming future. So stay tuned. There's more to come. And thanks very much for your attention.